This 92-minute martial arts drama film from director Newt Arnold performed well domestically, taking home 11 times its modest $1 million budget. Released in February of 1988, the story is partially inspired by the real-life fighter Frank Dukes, who participates in an illegal and sometimes deadly martial arts tournament in Hong Kong known as the Kumite. In this, his first substantial starring role, Jean-Claude Van Damme showcases his impressive athletic abilities, including his trademark helicopter-style spinning heel kicks, even utilizing the real Dukes as his off-screen coordinator. Despite the 28-year-old strong French accent, he does a decent job carrying the film, portraying the rookie fighter with an endearing sense of eagerness and humility. Like all sports movies, this one includes its fair share of montages, including an early sequence where Van Damme learns to fight blindfolded and endure physical pain, both of which, unsurprisingly, come into play later on. The R-rated picture also begins Jean-Claude's long-standing obsession with himself. As a co-editor on the project, he made sure to include ample footage of his half-naked, ripped body. Alongside him as the big, mannish brute heap of friends is Donald Gibb, fresh off the success of his first two Revenge of the Nerds appearances, who contributes an amusing and warm performance, especially given his violent surroundings. The primary villain, portrayed by a scenery-chewing Bolo Young, is so ridiculously evil it makes rooting against him almost seem too easy, taunting JCVD by saying, You break my record, now I break you. With the exception of an early role from Forrest Whitaker, the rest of the below-average supporting cast will be largely unfamiliar to Western audiences. Well, at least they were to me. While all the fighting is totally entertaining, it's also very exaggerated with extreme facial expressions and gratuitous amounts of slow motion. And since its ending is a foregone conclusion from the outset, it honestly tends to drag on a bit too long. The techno-inspired score from Paul Herzog keeps things tense and loud during the film's most dramatic moments, aided by some quintessentially 80s soft rock songs from Stan Bush. A somewhat unconventional story presented with traditional cinematography and a mostly believable script progresses along just quick enough to keep audiences from getting bored, but there's never anything new here. The film's success launched three direct-to-video sequels in the 1990s, none of which featured Van Damme, and a future reboot is also rumored to be in the works. Playing out like a low-rent Asian version of the Rocky films, this can definitely be a great movie for all fans of martial arts and large pectoral muscles. For everyone else, it's a decent sports movie about underdog spirit and competition, only worth watching once or twice. Bloodsport. Graphic fights propel average story. Here's some of your thoughts now from the YouTube comments. Bloodsport on the Raidomatic, a 7 and a 6. Plenty of well done fights and action resulted in you rating this a cool. A film that succeeds because of its simplistic approach, but also suffers a bit due to its familiarity, I thought this was good. 